in a minute since I did a stupidly honest video, and I go through a lot of shit throughout my day, and I don't really talk about my negativity, I kind of just keep it held in, but some of my negativity has some humor to it, thus, which brings us to this video series that I am calling Department Stories. And in department stories, we're going to be talking about my marvelous misadventures at my 9 to 5. Because I don't really think I really talked about it. But there's some pretty interesting things that go down. You know, now, I don't think I really explained where I work. And I'm not going to tell you guys exactly where I work. But I'm going to give you an idea as to what I do. Just to help out with the stories. So... This is going to be humorous. Uh, some of this is going to be unbelievable. But it's all going to be truthful. And it's all meant to be taken as me talking about my grievances, but getting it out in a way that's funny, humorous, and that we all can enjoy. Because misery loves company, especially if we can all laugh at it. I understand that some of this stuff will not be believable. But like I said, it's truthful. It did happen. Um, and it happened to me. So, in my line of work, I work at a, as you can guess your name, a department store, which is a long line of retail, things like that. Now, the department store I work at, I won't drop the name uh, because I know people on the online are crafty and shit, and they'll try to find out where motherfucker work at making false calls and prank calls and shit using my name and things like that even though I never dropped my real name online but still people will find out shit so I'm extra cautious but the department store I work at it's along the lines I would say like a Lowe's and a Home Depot it's basically along the lines of that but it's like a mom and pop store uh, kind of deal but basically, there's like, you know, lumber, hardware, there's an outside garden area. Like I said, along the lines of a Home Depot or Lowe's, if you're familiar with those stores. And with me working there, you know, it's rare. I understand that most people, when they go to their job, you know, they're always complaining about other employees. At my job, the employees aren't the problem. It's the customers. And since I've been working there, the only issue that I've ever been having is with the customers, from my experience. You know, I'm pretty sure if you ask other people that work there, maybe some of the other employees get on their nerves. But for me, the employees aren't the problem. It's literally the customers. Which brings us to this first episode of Department Stories, an episode I like to call Dumb Ass customers dumbass customers because the things that I have to deal with and many of my co-workers have to deal with is on a level of stupidity that I don't think anybody can imagine and there was an event that took place during my shift today that was the straw that broke the camel's back because I always wanted to do a series of videos like this I just you know let's just say that this event which I'm going to talk about in thorough detail, is what caused me to say, fuck it, I'm going to just do it tonight when I get home, regardless how tired I am, because I am tired. I've been working from 12 to 7, 7 hours, hard labor. Now, in my line of work, you know, I work in the garden, right? Oh, I don't know what that is. In my line of work, I work in the garden area, and as such, I have to deal with, uh, you know, customers wanting, you know, big pallets of items, uh, be it some retaining wall, some pavers, you know, bags of rock, things like that. But oftentimes... You have customer, customers who bring vehicles 
that are not suited to carry the load that they want to take at that time. Just such that they have to do two or three trips when they only intended to do one and then they get mad at you for basically nothing. And it's been many a times where, you know, I drive the forklift and other machines there. I'm, I'm learning how to drive other machines, but the forklift I am certified for. And too many times, this is like the main thing that really started to turn the gears to make me want to do the Department Story series. You have customers who will sit there and ask for, let's just say, 300 pounds of retaining wall. Of course, they ask for like a certain number of the retaining wall blocks, but overall, you know, just to get an understanding of how much it weighs, um, be it a pallet or it may be like a certain amount, they end up getting like 30 or probably more, oftentimes it's more, of retaining wall block or pavers or whatever the case is. And it pretty much comes out to be hundreds of pounds that their vehicle cannot uh, maintain without the suspension uh, being, you know, really uh, stressed out or whatever the case may be, but the suspension won't hold. And it's been, you know, often, and when you are getting the order for them or you're bringing a pallet out with the forklift, you know, we always ask, you know, what type of vehicle are you driving? The answer is always a truck. Now, being in the line of work that I'm doing, when somebody tells you that they're driving a truck, oftentimes that, you know, you're thinking that, okay, it's a big truck, it's a Ford F-150, or it's a big vehicle that can sustain that type of weight without putting so much stress on the suspension and, you know, basically putting your vehicle at risk, <laughs> you know, and again, you go get the the items that they want, the amount that they want, very heavy load, and then they'll go, you know, and we tell them, bring your vehicle up front, and we'll load you up. Again, putting it in our minds that we are bringing this to a truck, by default in our minds, and this may be our own downfall, <laughs> but we got to listen to the customer, of course. We're thinking that they have a vehicle that can sustain these loads. So we're thinking, okay, we're going to do this in one trip. Good. We get the, the item. Item probably weighs like a, at least 300 to 400 pounds, sometimes even more than that. They come out, little bitty ass Nissan, little bitty ass vehicle. I mean, hell, just today, we were getting some blocks for somebody, and they told us that they had a truck. Motherfucker comes around the front with a fucking town and country from, like, 1993. I mean, <laughs> and the pallet has about, like, a good 160 on it. Man wanted the whole pallet. Expected us to put the whole pallet back there. We put 32 blocks in this car. That car was on a gangster lean. And it's just laughable that you have people who don't understand how vehicles work. But even if you don't understand that, you can clearly tell that your car was not meant to carry large loads, say like that of a like a like a Ford truck or you know even one of our rental vehicles um, that can carry you know thousands of pounds without putting so much, uh, without putting the suspension at risk of, of breaking apart, you know, I remember last year there was a, a situation where this guy, he wanted, I think, 80 of our wall blocks, now, each of each pallet of our wall blocks, of this particular wall block, holds 60, right, they hold 60, this guy was going to get a pallet, and then he was going to get an additional um, 
he was gonna get another uh He was gonna get another twenty <clears throat> off of another pallet. Now, for whatever reason, this guy just thought he was gonna get all this on the back of his truck. Now, mind you, he had a very old, small. Again, we asked him, you know, if he had a truck or not that can handle the weight. He told us yes, and. He brings up this very old, rusted Nissan truck. And I'm just, you know, matter of fact, it was a very old Toyota truck. But you can clearly tell it was rusted. It was, you know, it wasn't a vehicle you would use to try to carry that much weight. And we have to advise against you you know loading up that much on the truck because we don't put want to put the customers vehicles at risk you know but we live by the customers all the always right and if they keep persisting then we have to you know go through with the customers orders so there was this one moment i remember where you know a customer wanted you know um like a good 80 at a wall block right a whole pallet Plus an additional, um, you know, from another pallet. We're loading him up. As the forklift is releasing the pallet on the back of the truck, you can clear, before you even get there, because we did it so much, you can clearly tell that the suspension was going to give out. This guy urged us. said, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Just, just put the pallet on the back of the truck. And then we're going to get the other 20 and we're going to stack it on top of that. We couldn't even put the pallet down halfway. You can clearly hear the suspensions creaking and squeaking. And the truck is just like folding in half. It, it, you can clearly tell this wasn't going to happen. So we lift it up and tell, advise the guy, you know, hey, this isn't going to work. You know, just load up as many as you can and just make a few trips. No, no, no. He's like, no, 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 no. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Let's just, let's just put it on there. It'll be okay. I'm just like, all right. So we put it on there. The truck seems stable. Guy told us he's going to come back for the rest. Because he was only able to get the one pallet on there. Guy drove off, drives off, never came back. So I guess we know what happened with that situation. And <laughs> at, at this store that I work at, you know, it seems like on normal days, the customers there okay, I guess you would say. They're manageable. I, I, I guess you could say that's a good word to use. But then you have times where, like today, and for however long this is, where we have sales, and the customers just go fucking ballistic. And I don't know what it is about California and customers, and yes, we're going to break this down into race, because I noticed that different races act different ways when it comes to sales at this particular department store and it is hilarious when you notice these things and <laughs> it cannot be ignored um you have some customers are primarily white people i'm gonna throw them out there because they when it, i don't know what it is but when a sale happens and the traffic it's like when the traffic gets heavier they just take more risk like no fucks given if I could tell you how many times, it's like, because there's a walkway that goes from our garden area right out into the parking lot, and but there's vehicles always running back and forth. And if I could tell you how many um, horns I heard blow, because there was so many close collisions, it is hilarious. Bro. They... It seems like they just want to just walk out into the middle of the street. Like, they gives no fucks when it comes to the traffic. It's, it's like the heavier the traffic is, the more willing they're willing to walk out in the street. The more willing they are to walk out in the middle of the street just to get the car. Everybody's in a rush. And it's it's scary, but at the same time, it's just like, bro, this is not, this is not it. Oh, and old white ladies? Oh, my God. Some of them maybe some of the nicest people you ever meet 
But when it comes to a sale, they are not to be fucked with. And it's a certain way you gotta handle them too. Cause if you, cause when it comes to flowers, when it comes to flowers, oh my god, bruh. When it comes to flowers, bruh, <laughs> they will chew your head off if it's like it's a certain way you gotta handle them. I noticed that. You know, always sweet, always nice on normal days. When it's a sale, fuck you. You don't have the item I want. I'm going somewhere else. You know, it's one of those moments. Like I said, you can't talk to them normally. You have to tell them in a different way that you don't have the item that they want. Like, you can't tell them that it's not there. You have to tell them, oh, we'll be getting this item in oh, uh, within a few days. Of course, we don't really know because we work with the vendors and the vendors bring what they bring and we just sell it. But you can't tell them that because then they'll just turn up on you and they just, you know, it's not like you can control what the hell they, you know, they want. So, or you can't control what they bring. Vendors. So, it's, it's incredible, bro. Oh, man. Now, the Mexicans, oh, man. These are the ones that... Ha- when I was talking about those vehicle issues, on oh, white people they do it too. But the Mexicans, they really like to talk about how how much they know their vehicles, and you will be surprised how much they just they bring vehicles that aren't fit to carry the load that they want. You know, and it's it's funny. You know, we got bags of mulch up front. You know, mulch is which is like wood chips that they put down on top of the soil. That, you know, around the plant to, to maintain the soil's moisture. So they come in and they they get, you know, maybe like 10 bags or whatever, 10, 20 bags. They have a little bitty ass car. And I'm just like, dude, you may want to do a couple trips. You know, I've seen people tie bags of mulch with twine or bungee cords to the top of their car. Like, no, fuck no, we're doing this in one trip. Does anything I say about the Mexicans, hardest working motherfuckers, the most relentless efficient people that I know, you know, especially over the blacks, I'm black myself, so, you know, that's a big compliment coming from me, and blacks, I don't really have no trouble with the blacks, I don't, black people, they seem relatively, relatively cool, I mean, of course, you get the occasional, you know, assholes every once in a while, but it's nothing like too big, though, you know, and then you get the foreigners. I'm just calling foreigners, the gypsies, you know, the Muslims, and the Asians. Oh my God, the Asians. Asians, man. They always want 50 or something. <laughs> I swear. They always want 50 or something. And I don't even know why. They buy things in, in sets of 30 or 50. It's like the number just stuck on that. Like, let me get 30 of this. Let me get 50 of that. And I'm all well and good. You know, that's money for us. But still, like, can't you just make multiple trips? Like, why do you need to take the whole load right now? Like, it's just, bro, we got, it's like the customers are the biggest issue at this, at this store, which again, I have no problem with. I know how to deal with them, but at the same time, there are events that happen, which I'm going to get into. Remember when I said there was that one event that made me just say, fuck it, I'm making a series. You will, you will not even believe what the hell happened because there is literally I mean you can't even put into words how idiotic this was now there is a line a line that human beings should not cross it's a line I like to call stupidity and crossing that line of stupidity means that you're a fucking idiot. But you have some people who just strap on a backpack and just skyrocket over that motherfucking line and land on Mars. What I'm about to tell you will possibly go down in history as the dumbest customers that I have ever dealt with. Now, being I work at a department store such as this, that's along the line of a Home Depot and uh, and Lowe's, oftentimes you get 
the occasional shoplifters. You know, they come in there with their bags. They try to hide them underneath coats. You know, it'd be hot as hell outside, and they come in with the fucking, with the big-ass trench coats trying to be slick. How you gonna be slick and it's like 100 degrees outside and you got a trench coat on? You might as well just slap a sign on yourself that says, I'm coming here to steal something. You know? <laughs> and, of course, our security guards catch them and they get locked up. The police come and arrest them. But oftentimes you get people who are a little bit more crafty, I guess you will say. And what they'll do is that is that they'll be in teams. They'll have one person, you know, trying to do the distracting. And then you have the other person off trying to do what, trying to steal whatever it is they're trying to steal. Such as is the case with what I'm about to tell you that really inspired me to do this video. When you deal with what I'm about to tell you, when I know I'm beating around the bush, don't worry, I'm going to get to the point. You can't say that you dealt with a customer as dumb as this. Um... So, this customer drives up, right? You know, it's a Mexican guy. Has a bunch of stuff in the back of his truck. I'm saying he has like a a small Ford. It looks like an old time small Ford truck. Very small. Guy has a blower. Uh, you know, um, he has a pressure washer, a lawnmower. Basically, he looks at the gills in the back of his truck. Even got a garbage can with a rake, a shovel, and a pickaxe in it. You know, do, you know, I guess he does his yard work around, um, you know, like a lot of them do. Um, but, you know, he has his items in the back of his truck. Guy comes up, buys 12 bags. 12 bags of red mulch, right? And, you know, 12 bags. Mind you, he is filled to the gills of the back, to the back of his truck with all these other lawn tools that we don't even know how he's going to get it fixed. Like I said, Mexicans, they are efficient. They will find a way to do anything. And somehow he got those 12 bags in the back of his truck. Now, in the process of us, you know, me and a co-worker, we were putting the the bags of the, the, the bags of mulch that he paid for, you know, into his vehicle. He found a way to make them fit. He said, if you guys have any extra ones, you know, if you guys have extra, you know, say, I'll take them. Now, my co-worker didn't really understand. See, here's the thing with foreigners, the people who really can't speak English too well. When they say certain things, I understand that they don't mean it in the way that we say it. That's good customer service right there. Oftentimes, they don't understand that in America, when we say certain things, how you say it has a certain meaning behind it. So when he said that, I understood that he meant, you know, if we have any free bags, because normally with the mulch, when the bags are torn, be it because we were using a forklift and the forks may have, you know, we had one of the bags torn, or if during transit one of the bags got torn or something like that, then we can't sell those bags. So what we do is that we mark them down and then we give them to customers for free. So when he said he, if, you, if we had any extra, I understood, you know, when he said that he'll take extra bags, um, I understood that's what he meant, or at the very least, that's what I'm assuming that he meant. But my customer was saying, like, look, because when it comes to shoplifters, we can't really stop them. Like, we have our security guards for that, because, and, and I think that's what, at, at any retail job, they don't want you to confront the customer, like, directly, or they don't want you to physically... Um, I guess you say they don't want you to physically make physical contact with the customer should they try to steal anything. So, you know, when he said that, my coworker said, um, you know, I can't stop you. Like, I'm not going to give you any free bags, any extra bags, but if you take them, I can't stop you. I could just take your license plate number turn it over to the police, you know, et cetera, et cetera, follow protocol. So, mind you, there's this apron area, like pretty much like right in front of the mulch, where people just come, they get what they pay for, you know, they pay for the mulch and they pull their vehicles up and they load. 
he's right. The, the guy with the, the one of the red most again, he pulled up right there. Then we load up the 12, but he's hanging out there for like a little while. Now me, I'm out there. I'm watching him. So I got to make sure that he doesn't steal anything. Even though I can't touch him, you know, if any funny business goes on, we can call a security guard. They can come out there and they can handle it. Um, So I'm watching him, making sure that he doesn't steal anything. And again, remember when I said you have some people who are in like teams when they want to shoplift? You have the person coming to distract the workers, and then you have the other one over there trying to, you know, trying to steal whatever it is they're trying to steal. I'm seeing this guy, he's over there for like a good 10, 20 minutes, you know, and he's just, it looks like he's trying to find time to try to get anything, you know, trying to get some extras, quote unquote, uh, for the free. So, I've dealt with these two customers before. Not the brightest light bulbs in the box. His wife, as he he's over there, you know, taking his time. I'm keeping my eyes on him. The guy's wife comes up to me and proceeds to give me the dumbest distraction question you could ever give somebody. When I tell you that this will go down in history as one of the most mind-numbing events, one of the dumbest events you could ever imagine. I am not lying to you people. This one takes the cake. Lady comes up to me, right? She has a little girl with him. Their yeah, little girl. She brings a basket with her. Now the baskets that we have at this department store, they're kinda like race cars. They have like two um two uh black steering wheels. Like the kids, they can pretend like they're driving around the store. You know, obviously it's just a regular cart, but it's like almost like a race car kind of. And there's two, you know, they have two steering wheels in like the little driver's seat area, you know, so you could put like, you know, at max two kids in there and they can pretend like they're driving around. But it's no different than a regular basket. It just has that, you know, customization to it. Um, so it can be fun for the kids. Lady brings her daughter her daughter over there, with one of those baskets. Proceeds to ask me the dumbest distraction question you could possibly ask anybody. And I quote, Excuse me, sir. I'm having a problem, and I wonder if you could help me. How do I put my daughter in the basket? The look that you probably have on your face right now doesn't even come close to the look that I had on my face when I got asked that. Didn't take my eye off the guy, by the way. I just couldn't say anything. Oh, but it gets better. On top of the fact of her asking me, how do I put my daughter in the basket? She asked me, which side is the right side to put her on? Because remember, I said they had two steering wheels. You can put your child in there, you know. And I'm just like, which side? And I didn't say anything. Because obviously you can't call them stupid in front of their face or anything like that. But damn, is there anything up there? <laughs> like, this is when questions get asked along the lines of, should some people be allowed to have kids? And I say this very respectfully. I mean, dude. Almost, it's so sad, you kind of wanted to come up with something better for her on the spot. Like, we're in a garden area. You could have asked anything about the flowers to distract me. You could have asked, are, are there annuals or are they perennials? You know, annuals being the ones that only come once a year, then you have to replant them. The perennials, the one that, that blooms, you know, that dies, then comes back. You could have asked anything. Are these flowers evergreens? Where can I plant these? Do you have anything that complements these flowers? Anything along the lines of that? You come up to me and ask me, how do I put my daughter in the basket? And is this the right side to put her on? Which side is the right side to put her on? Like, wow. These are the types of people who try to eat with their ass and shit out their mouth. Literally. These are the types of people who should not be allowed to cook around fire. These are the types of people who takes out an empty pot, turns on the burner on the right side, 
put said empty pot on the left side and then wonder why the water and then wonder why there's no water boiling. Dumb ass customers. <laughs>